Hello everyone and welcome to Wing It Med. Um, starting a YouTube channel has been on my mind for quite some time now and I took the opportunity of this current occasion to uh, do it and I thought I would begin with a CT um, tutorial and because I, ha I have a certificate on it. Um, so most of the knowledge that I have is from Radiology Masterclass uh, which is a free platform for you to learn uh, most of uh, quite quite a few radiological uh, features so a big shout out to them first um, although I must warn you if you do require the certificate you need to pay for it and uh, it's actually quite a good uh, thing to have under your belt so you guys should explore them I will leave the link for them in the description below so I chose today May the 11th because uh, today is a special day for radiology um, this is the day uh, back in 1968 when Godfrey Hounsfield, an electrical engineer from Nottinghamshire, were, uh, he presented the first ever CT prototype. And so I'm honored to begin this channel on this particular day. So, and also, most of all, I hope you guys find value in my work. Before we begin the topic proper, Let's talk about these guys. No, the quarantine didn't get to me. <laughs> Our favorite boys band from back in the 70s were directly involved in the advancement of CT. And because of this guy right here, Godfrey Hounsfield, he was a British electrical engineer who worked for the EMI Records company, who at the time owned the Beatles. So the profits from the Beatles gang was invested in the development of CT. All right, so this is Atkinson Morley's hospital, which is located in London, home of this guy. Seriously, guys, if you haven't watched Sherlock, you're missing out on a lot. So back to topic. Atkinson Morley's hospital is where the first clinical CT was ever taken. And uh, the patient was a lady of the early 20s, I guess. And uh, she was suspected of having frontal lobe tumor. Right, to begin with, let's explore the differences between CT and MRI. I'm not going to go into the details, nor am I going to talk physics right here. So, whenever you look at a radiological image section, so look at the soft tissues. So, if the soft tissue is well defined, it's definitely an MRI. So, as a rule of thumb, remember for bone and hemorrhage, it's CT. While soft tissue, it is always MRI. So the image to the right is an MRI while the other is CT. God, it's stuffy in here. Let's open some windows. <laughs> so there's this concept of windows and CT. So to begin with, let's start with that. Principally, there are two windows in CT. We have the brain window and bone window. To better explain this concept, I would use photography as an analogy. In photography, and as an extension radiology as well, details is everything. If you look at the center third of the image, this is perfectly exposed. The details are explicit in the shadows, the brights, and the midtones. If you look at the third of the image to the light, this is an overexposed image in which you can see the details are lost in the bright sky. If you look at the left of the image, that is underexposed. So you, you notice that especially in the rocks in the background, it's super dark and you cannot see the details there. So the common theme is that there should be a center point around which all of the luminances are measured. The same ideology can be translated to that of seed. However, you need to switch light with density. There should be a central density around which all of the densities are measured. In CT, this neutral density point, as I call it, is variable, and this is the basis of windows. Now, we talked about the neutral density point. In the case of a bone window, the neutral density point is closer to that of the bone, which means that here you can see the details of the bone clearly. You can see the outer table, the inner table, and interspersed is the diploid, the dark region. So here you can notice that the 
cranial cavity appears to be empty. This is because the brain parenchyma is less dense compared to the bone. There's such a huge gap between them. And so the cranial cavity appears to be empty because it's underexposed, so to speak. Now switching gears to the brain window, here the neutral density point is closer to that of the brain parenchyma. And so the details in the brain parenchyma can be seen. So you can see some guide eye over here and there's a deep sulcus over here, etc. But as in the case of the overexposed image, the bone has lost all its detail. It's blown out. And so always keep in mind that any CT that you see, always look for both the brain window and the bone window. So because the bone window is important to see discontinuities in the bone. Uh, it could be a fracture, a metastasis, etc. While a brain window is essential to see parenchymal anomalies, it could be a ventricular megaly, an intracerebral hemorrhage, etc. Now, unlike X-ray, which is a 2D image, CT is always 3D. You take different sections and you stack them up on each other, and that helps you to visualize in three-dimensional axis, lesions, etc. Okay, so before we move further into sections, let's talk about sutures. So we have the coronal suture, which separates the frontal bone from the two parietal bones. So we have the parietals here, one and two. So between the two parietal bones is the sagittal suture. And at the rear is the lambdoid suture, which separates the parietal, excuse me, the parietal bones from the occipital bone. So that's the occipital down here. So these sutures, they act as landmarks and help localize lesions with respect to the calvarium and also somewhat with respect to the lobes as well, because it's quite difficult to differentiate the uh, lobes when it comes to CT. So we use regions just like and zones just like we do in a chest x-ray. So if uh, those of you who are who have been introduced to the basics of chest x-ray would know that we never talk about upper lobe middle lobe and lower lobe that we just talk about the upper middle and lower zones because there is no clear distinction between the lobes in chest x-ray so as an extension in ct as well we never talk about frontal lobe parietal lobe temporal or occipital lobes for that matter we talk about uh, frontal region temporal parietal region and uh, temporal occipital region. Right, so to begin with, we have the coronal section, which is taken along the coronal axes. So the coronal axis divides the body into the anterior and posterior halves, and this is exactly what the coronal section does as well. Next up is the sagittal section. Sagittal section, as the name suggests, is taken along the sagittal axis and the parasagittal axes. So this divides the body into left and right. The most informative of all sections, especially in the setting of an acute CT, would be a transverse section, wherein the section is taken along an axis perpendicular to that of the axis of the body. As a general rule of thumb, always remember that in a transverse section, you are looking at the image as though it is above you and you're looking from below. So this is very important because there is always the question of laterality in radiology and people always seem to confuse this, but it's quite simple. Let's take this transverse section, for example, and dividing it into right and left halves. So Again, let me remind you, we are looking at this image from below, right? So this side would be right, and this would be left. All right, so let's use this particular section to help orient anterior and posterior. So can you see these black spaces back here? Could you think of what these possibly could be? Um, if you said mastoid air cells, you're right. So these, these are the mastoid air cells. 
and up here the slits represent the nasal cavity and this happens to be the maxillary sinus so the direction facing the nasal cavity and the maxillary sinus would be anterior and the direction facing the mastoid air cells would be posterior simple as that to summarize whatever the radiological picture in front of you if it's a transverse section then the laterality would be thus and anterior posterior would be thus so thank you all for tuning in so this is just uh, the basic orientation of CT and uh, we have stacked up anatomy and subsequently a certain uh, uh, acute pathologies in CT.